Welcome to the newest episode of The Process of Fat Loss, where our goal is to help you understand the best way to lose fat and live a healthier life. Join us as we discuss some of the toughest and most valuable topics in health and fitness. Today, we are going to be talking about intermittent, intermittent fasting. This is one, a little bit of a hot topic in, in currently in the nutrition world, and we're going to try to make it as simple as possible and then give you some pros and cons. Um, so Trevor, should I intermittent fast? Um, this is... I don't, I try not to do it depends a lot because I want to give people real answers, but it really does depend. And we're going to give you the factors on why this really does depend when we go through this idea. Um, just so you know, pretty much going forward, intermittent fasting. When I say, I'm just going to say IF because I, the intermittent word gets me a lot. So I'm just going to say IF going forward. So if you hear that, that means that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so the very first thing I want to point out is you do not have to fast to lose weight, period. That's the misnomer I think that's out there is people say you have, fasting super important. It is not required. Now it's a tool, it can be utilized depending on things, but it does not have to be one of the things that you do. Um, so the main benefits of intermittent fasting are you reduce your eating window. So, so again, like we're looking through a fat loss spectrum, right? And I think that's important to make sure we're looking through things. So everything I'm gonna talk about, there are other brain benefits of this kind of stuff. There's other like um, energy benefits, but a lot of things we're gonna talk about strictly in that fat loss. So so if you read out uh, other articles, I'm not gonna list every single thing that fasting can do for you, but we're gonna talk mainly about the, the uh, weight loss things. So you reduce your eating window so you don't have to worry about prepping food as much. And food prep is a big thing our clients struggle with. So like reducing from having prep for three meals a day to two meals a day, makes a big difference for people in like their mental uh, capacity for that. You get one less meal a day, which can help you be more productive um, and not taking time to eat. It also allows you to like not have to worry about being so, so lethargic after eating, right? So a lot of times when we're done eating, we have a slight uh, energy issue because our body's digesting that food. This is actually kind of nice that you have a longer period of time when you're intermittent fasting to not have to worry about digesting food. You can actually have time where your body's not trying to break down food. So there's another benefit of that is like you don't have to worry about planning the meal, but you also don't have to worry about digesting another meal, which is kind of good. Um, it might slow down aging, um, which is, you know, it's not fat loss, but it's, it's huge to a lot of people is like slow down aging by autophagy, which is literally just the body cleaning up damaged uh, cells and fat cells are included in that as damaged cells. So the body goes through in the fasting process. If it has a big enough window, right? The body naturally does that through, through your eight hours uh, at night, <coughs> Excuse me. through your eight hours at night, it's doing certain, but if I have, have a bigger window of 12 to 16 hours, it can just do more cleanup of cells that need to be, that have been damaged. Okay. So then there's a category of who shouldn't fast, right? So those are I, those are kind of the people that the category that I just listed. That's the benefits of of fasting. But and pretty much anybody can fast. But there's a small category of people that I don't think should fast, and that's why I wanted to list this out. Like everybody, if I don't mention you in this like fasting, like who shouldn't fast, that means everybody else could fast. You know, so people that really shouldn't fast is somebody that loves breakfast. If they're a breakfast person, they probably shouldn't fast at least at the morning time frame. There's a, we'll talk about different fasting schedules, but that person might be a person that fasts in the evening, not in the morning. So if you love breakfast, and you definitely, do, I wouldn't be a person that skips that morning breakfast. Um, someone who has health issues that necess necessitate eating multiple times a day. So these are people that have to take certain pills consistently on a regular schedule, and it has to be taken with food. You probably shouldn't fast. It's probably no, that, that's actually a negative effect to you. Um, so we have to make sure that we do really concentrate on making that like certain health benefits don't outweigh other health risks, right? So like when it comes down to fasting, you're not getting enough benefits out of that by missing out on pill schedule you're supposed to be taking. Um, anyone who has issues with restrictive eating in the past. So like if you're somebody that hasn't, has like re really been bad about restricting, you've had either um, some type of disordered eating with that. Um, you don't, you, this should not be a tool you use because it's probably going to lead you into another level of restrictive eating. Cause this is a level of restrictive eating, right? I recommend people when they fast, they still eat the exact same amount of food in their eight hour window than they, as they would in a 12 or 14 hour eating window. However, what happens when people fast is they take an extra few hours off of eating and what they do in that eight hour window that they can eat, they norm normally under eat. And that's the issue with that restrictive eating idea is this is a way for restrictive eaters to get away with not eating as much food and restrict themselves again without like feeling like they're like skipping a whole day of eating or like binge eating. So, so just something to think about, like we got to be very smart about that. That's a mental issue more than a physical issue. So we got to be smart. Um, and then someone who doesn't do well with hungry. So like this would be another maybe disorder eating a little bit, but like the, a person that has a tendency to binge eat because when they get really hungry, um, 
So, you know, there's binge eating with the idea that like you do it because you're stressed out, but other people do it when they get starving. And so if you're somebody that like goes face deep into food, if you're a little bit hungry, like do not create bigger windows of eating. I still don't want you eating more than three times a day, realistically for fat loss purposes, uh, muscle gaining, you probably eat four to six times a week. I just start six times a day, but like fat loss, we probably want to eat three meals or less. But if you're somebody that gets struggles bad with hunger issues, like I wouldn't recommend you doing intermittent fasting, at least until you get become fat adapted. If you have a fat adapted diet, then you could probably look at it down the road, but be very careful because you'll end up like face deep in um, food that you're not supposed to just because you're too hungry and it's easy access, easy accessible food. All right. So let's say that someone decides that fasting is for them and they want to get started. What is the best way to do it or kind of a schedule or process to go through? So there's tons of windows out there and technically we all fast, right? We have a sleeping window that's fasting. Um, but the way we look at it is like intermittent fasting is longer fasting periods. Um, we recommend 16 hours of fasting with an eight hour fast eating window, right? Um, so in terms of that, like we have a 16 hour fasting, but we need an eight hour eating window. I think people can get away with 12. I think people can get away with 14 hour windows as well. We just find that like, if you're going to fast anyway, we might as well just do that, that longer period of time. So you get the benefit of not having to have a big gap between meals. So if you're going to eat just two meals anyway, um, we want to make sure that we don't have like um, an eating gap that's like 12 hours between meals, because then you end up with hunger in another set. So 16 hours of fasting is actually a little bit better. It's kind of that thing when you start to eat, it actually is a harder thing than when you haven't eaten for a longer period of time. So it allows enough people to have those two meals, but enough time that fasting window that they don't have to eat three meals inside of that time frame. Um, so this can be done in a couple of different ways at 16 hour window. And uh, before I go on to that, a couple of things is I do not love people that fast for very, very long windows, meaning like they fast for, you know, if you have to fast once in a while for 24 hours, meaning uh, obviously you have to do it sometimes for medical things, but let's say you ate lunch at noon, you have a super busy evening and you're not going to have, you know, you're running to kids games and you decide not to have dinner that night, kind of the fast then and eat the next day at noon again. Totally fine. But if that happens from time to time, no big deal. Some people only eat one meal a day. Now I don't love that idea because most people are trying to lose fat. That's not a great category for them. But the thing I don't really love to hear is people that are doing three to five day fasts. I think that's pushing the limit, and I don't think that's really benefiting fat loss. And I think there's a lot too many negatives going on. So when you talk about fasting, there is there is overdoing it when it comes to fasting. I think 16 hours a day is probably plenty for most people trying to lose fat. Um, now, obviously, for religious purposes, it's a whole other story, but we're not talking about that when it comes to this, this lens. Okay, so how can you do this? You can eat the first meal at noon, and then your last meal will be 8 p.m. or 11 7 p.m. However, you know, that eight hour window, everyone to do that. The other one that people don't really think about is like what I talked about with somebody that loves breakfast, right? You eat your first meal when you wake up, let's say 8 a.m., and you eat your last meal at 4 p.m., which is your dinner, and you just don't eat that evening after 4 p.m. So, and honestly, like this is probably kind of how my, my parents might eat um, now that they're getting older. They eat a much eat earlier dinner, right? And so they eat maybe a later breakfast, a little bit earlier dinner. So their window is actually like, they might be fasting without even realizing it because they're just eating in a shorter window of time frame of the time they're awake as they get older. So this is something to kind of think about when you're looking at that. That's actually a pretty easy way to fast for people because during their waking hours, they're actually not, they're eating kind of a normal schedule. Um, so the big thing to also think about on that is like, the time doesn't really matter. So let's say I start my fast, I stop, I start eating at 10 p.m. I sorry, 10 a.m., sorry. Just go eight hours from there. Whatever time you start, you break your fast, you just put an eight hour time clock on it. That's how you do the thing. It doesn't have to be a perfect, if I can't eat at 12 today and I have to eat at one, then my fasting window is from one to nine instead of one to eight. All right. So what are some final ideas and action steps regarding intermittent fasting? The biggest takeaway is literally you don't have to do it for fat loss. So please don't worry about it for that purpose. It's, it could help. But there are ways it's helping. And, and, I personally fast every day, so I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be hypocritical in this sense. I do it all the time, but I do it more for schedule than I do it for fat loss. Um, if it fits your schedule and it makes you easier to makes it easier to stick to your diet, that's what it's meant for, right? If you're somebody that just can't do breakfast, you just don't like breakfast, cool, skip breakfast. If you're somebody that has a super busy evening because you're running to kids' games all the time and you know you can't eat healthy after a certain period of day, cool, just eat your last meal and you're done for the day, right? So just make sure it fits your schedule if you're going to choose it. And it's not for everybody and doesn't work. And if it doesn't work for you, totally fine. Don't worry about it. Don't do it. If it scares you, 
Definitely don't do it. It's not meant to do that. It's just meant to be a tool. And so if people want to learn more about intermittent fasting, where would you suggest they look for that? So Precision Nutrition is the certification that we have. They have an amazing ebook. It's really in depth about everything you can think about intermittent fasting. They go into all the other categories besides fat loss in terms of mental health and stuff like that. So if we really want to dig into it, I would start there. We'll, we'll hook a link in the show notes or probably link it on the blog as well. But the idea, like they, they break down every single component you could dream of, like uh, way overdone for what we, what we need to do in terms of that. All right, well, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed the discussion on today's topic. Remember, the best time to start living healthier is today, so make sure to take action on the action steps that we gave you in your life right away. If you did enjoy today's episode, please give us a review. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube or any of our um, platforms, and then follow us on social media to stay up to date on upcoming episodes and topics that we're going to be talking about. If you have any ideas for topics you would like to discuss, so send us an email, message us on social media or comment, and we'll get to in a future episode, maybe talk about um, something that you guys have questions about. Like Trevor said, we will link the um, ebook in the notes so that you guys can check that out in our blog on our website as well. Thanks again for listening and I hope you enjoyed um, enjoy this and join us again for the next episode of the process of fat loss. Thanks, see you guys.